Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, we have benchmarks on AMD's Ryzen 5600X, Intel released their first XE discrete GPU, ray tracing performance on one of AMD's RX 6000 cards, and AMD promises more before launch. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, while AMD's Ryzen 5000 CPUs are set to launch in just a few days, we have our first benchmarks on the upcoming 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 5600X. The benchmarks were found and shared by a user on the Linus Tech Tips forums and as you can see, they're from Cinebench. Now, the user did overclock it to 4.7 GHz across all cores, so keep that in mind when going over performance. As for the scores, in Cinemench R15, the 5600X got a single core score of 258 and a multi core score of 2040. In Cinemench R20, it got a very impressive single core score of 609 and a multi core score of 4746. And both of those scores completely crush Intel's 10600K and even gets close to AMD's 8 core 16 thread 3700X in multi core performance. Basically, AMD's 5000 series processors are as impressive as we thought. Of course, with all the new hardware coming out, saving money is likely a priority. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Honey, the completely free browser extension that finds promo codes so you don't have to. That's right, no more going through 100 coupon sites to find deals that work. Simply install Honey for free in just a couple clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of the 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up, you click apply coupons, and if it finds working codes, you watch the prices drop. That's it, and with over 100,000 five-star reviews, what are you waiting for? Get Honey for free today by visiting joinhoney.com slash gamermeld, and thanks to Honey for sponsoring today's video. Next up for today, Intel finally unveiled their first discrete XE GPU. It's called the Iris XE Max, and it's a part of their XE LP architecture and that means it is a mobile discrete GPU, but this is still quite interesting as it gives us an idea of where Intel compares architecturally to competitor GPUs. Starting things off, the GPU comes with 96 EUs, which is the same as what's in their Tiger Lake iGPU. The XE Max comes with a frequency of 1.65 GHz and 4 GB of LPDDR4X memory for a total bandwidth of 68 GB per second. As for release, Intel has three laptops planned for release this month, so they're coming quite soon. Luckily, an outlet already got a hold of the Acer Swift 3X equipped with the XE Max, and we already have our first benchmarks. The scores come from a video by OVO on Billy Billy, and in it, they actually had driver issues since they don't have the final drivers, but that just means we can expect even more performance out of the final product. Either way, they did share a benchmark from 3D Mark's Time Spy and Firestrike, and we can actually compare these numbers to Nvidia's mobile GPU, the MX450, thanks to Notebook Check. As you can see, the XE Max lost in Firestrike but took the win in Time Spy. Now, what's interesting is that the MX450 is a Turing based GPU, so it's not Nvidia's newest architecture, but it's also not Pascal or anything like that. I like to compare these two because they're aimed at similar markets and both have the same TDP. Obviously though, we'll have to wait to see how this translates into higher end products, but Intel could be quite competitive. Time, as always, will tell. Lastly for today, while AMD has released quite a few gaming benchmarks on the upcoming RX 6000 series of GPUs, the one thing they seem to conveniently leave off, and I mentioned it in my video after their announcement, was real time ray tracing performance. In fact, AMD barely discussed it during the announcement except to say that the RX 6000 series has it. Well, in a new post by PJ on Twitter, who's the editor of Unicos Hardware, and according to video cards, the site has proven to give quality leaks in the past, so this should be accurate. Anyway, he shared a leak of the RX 6800 non-XT model running Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ray tracing on. Apparently, the shadow quality was set to high, and the 6800 got 46 frames per second at 4K and 80 FPS at 2K. Now, what's interesting is that WCCF Tech made some charts comparing them to the RTX 3070 and 2080 Ti with Nvidia's DLSS Tech on and off. And as you can see, with DLSS off at 4K, AMD's RX 6800 gets just over 21% better performance over the RTX 3070. But when you turn DLSS on, the 3070 beats the 6800 by a little over 
Now, keep in mind that this was run with the Ryzen 5 3500X, which means it couldn't use AMD's new smart access memory, though I doubt it could completely make up for the difference. And this brings us to an interesting place. AMD looks to actually perform quite well in ray tracing, but it really may come down to the two companies' different proprietary technologies. On the one hand, we have NVIDIA's DLSS tech, which does look to bring more performance out of it, but DLSS requires programming from the developers. AMD's smart access memory, on the other hand, looks to help regardless of developer input. It's simply a tech that makes the system able to share the GPU memory for better performance regardless of game. So it really just depends on whether or not you think developers will use DLSS a lot. Of course, this is just one GPU and a couple benchmarks from one game. Also, AMD could have their own DLSS equivalent coming soon as well. Remember that both of these technologies are completely different and really have nothing to do with each other, it's just one has one and the other doesn't. Luckily, we won't have to wait too long for official answers, as AMD's own Frank Azor replied to a tweet regarding real-time ray tracing and upscaling. In his reply, he stated, quote, Those answers will come between now and our availability dates. So for anyone who wants definitive answers on things like RX 6000 ray tracing performance, we will hear something before release. And of course, if you want those answers, make sure to subscribe for when that information comes out. So while that does it for today, how well do you think AMD's RX 6000 series does at ray tracing? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.